evening. I have gone on a very long bike ride in San Clemente. I am very sore and I'm glad we did it. It was my idea. I wanted to do that for my anniversary. We went out to, to fire and iron in San Clemente too. It was, it was a little restaurant. It was cool. I'm glad we did that. I'm just very, very sore. We went up and down the hills and back up again and wow. That's what we used to do when we were younger. And I just, I sometimes get a little out of shape from time to time. And then also the hills look bigger than they did when I was younger. And so, yeah, when you fall, there's no one to take care of you. And I still have to be a mom, so I don't like to get hurt. Okay, rambling, sorry, October 25th. Here we go. We are quick enough at perceiving and weighing what we suffer from others, but we mind not what others suffer from us. Thomas Akempis, 1380 to 1471. This is how one Catholic monk put it, but this theme is heard around the rooms as Quote, when you point a finger at another, three fingers point back at you, end quote. Some of us find fault in others like there's a reward for it. Despite our sharp appraisal skills, our own foibles remain a mystery, or if we see them, we rationalize them. Maybe this is why in the original fourth step instructions, in the text, Alcoholics Anonymous, we are asked to write down our resentments toward people, institutions, and the laws of nature. This is playing to our strengths. It is only after this list is exhausted that we are directed to record what our role was in these conflicts. Seeing these dramas in this way opens the door to clear self-appraisal and healthier living. We are mindful of our constant inclination to criticize. That which we are most critical of reveals our own emotional or behavioral handicaps. Funny. In step four, the people who hurt and annoy us the most help us to understand aspects of our nature that we might have missed. Who was the last person, place, or thing to piss me off? What can I learn about myself and my nature from that experience? Did I have retaliation fantasies for this injustice? What sensations, feelings, and thoughts come with my anger or judgment? So let's see, the fourth step is made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. I think I have a lot of, I have a, I have, of course I have a constant inclination to criticize. I mean, it was part of our behavior in the organization to criticize even ourselves. So we could never really appreciate what we did because we had to do a better job. What was the problem? Why couldn't we get it together? Why did we buy that two seater sports car? Why didn't we go out in field service instead of going to you know, going to doing what the brother in Africa does, which is walk, what, 15 miles into crocodile infested waters. Yeah, so I'm always, I was always critical and I always compared myself. It was hard. <sighs> the last person, place, or thing to piss me off. Well, that would be myself. I get frustrated with myself. Because I, I wish I had done, you know, I wish I had done things differently. There were so many opportunities that I could have done things differently. And uh, what do I learn about myself and my nature from that experience? Well, um, to trust myself, but then to, to make sure that I do 
a little bit more digging, right? To do a lot of digging to find out what it is that I'm actually looking at. Because sometimes what we see in front of us isn't necessarily what we're actually looking at or what we actually see. So sensations, feelings, and thoughts that come with my anger and judgment, fantasies of, of retaliation for injustice, of course. Yeah, lots of injustices that I've had in the last couple of years and injustices that I, I don't think that were warranted, right, that, upon me. And so, yeah, of course, I always wanna, I always wanna feel, I always feel like I'm, I need retaliation. It's not easy to just let things go and say, okay, well, <sighs> karma, right? What you, what you give is what you get out of a situation. I'd like to believe that somebody's gonna get something back for their horrible behavior, but sometimes it's not you don't see that you never see it sometimes you don't see it and I'm sure they do you can't continue to do things that you just want to do and affect other people without and hurt them you eventually you eventually do I think I feel that you get something back from that you're you cause a lot of pain to yourself I like the book the body keeps score because uh, you can deny your your real truth even to yourself but your body always sees it and so in reality you really don't hide anything from yourself or other people your body can show you what you're not seeing so the importance of yes being honest anger I think is hard to um, process when it comes to wanting to get back at someone for someone for something that is was unfair you know I, I was thinking about that on my way back home there was a brother and he would always say oh don't throw the baby out with the bath water after he had talked to my husband and this this man was very very smart I mean he has millions of dollars he won a certain type of a uh, I don't know, he went into court and he was up against, I think, Apple. But he was for certain proprietary rights. I thought it was interesting because he was so intelligent, but he really didn't, he didn't really actually look up information to make himself see that this particular cult that I came from was abusive so yeah but I mean you can only s he was enormously overweight and and so you know it looked like he just stuffed everything inside of him and denied it and there was I mean I could see that there was obviously a problem looking back now but it's hard when you're going through it and when you finally look back at your life he happened to sit down with Jason and talk to him and tell him that this organization was fine uh, you know those kind of um, moments where the, your life could have changed if he had if someone had been more honest with themselves and with other people so yeah I get a little frustrated and of course you know you want to say things and there's nothing you can do you have to let it go um i think i enjoying what you do have left for me and my husband it's been 29 years of, of marriage so despite the difficulties we both encountered with people inside my cult trying to get out and trying to have reason I still was able to, we still had something. We still had a family. We still had a marriage. So yeah, <sighs> that's a lot to unpack. Well, I hope this helps you on your healing journey. 
I hope I make sense. There's times when I just look at what I say and I think, oh my gosh, nobody's going to understand. And then you get nervous when you talk to a camera and you're not really talking to anyone. And then I realize when I break and I jump into something else on another subject. So I have to think slowly, which is not necessarily, that is, that is a weakness I have to say. I have to think slowly. I kind of spark here and there. So, you know, and then I go on to the next, my next subject. So, hey, hopefully I'm not too, you know, hopefully I don't irritate you. Sorry if I do. Hopefully I, I can come across and explain what I'm trying to explain and you can understand it. Well, I had a good day. I'm sore. I'm going to take a hot shower. It's been, it's been good. It's been fun. And I, I got down some hills that I have had hard times with in the past and I did it. I just did it. It was so fun. And we got to see the ocean and I just have pictures of us at the restaurant. So I didn't really take pictures of the panoramic. It's dry and windy. It was dry and windy in San Clemente. And it's not really green right now. It's, it's really, it's just dry and cold looking. And there was some wind up there. So I had my superpower bike and I did good. I'm proud of myself. I conquered some fears. I hope this helps you on your healing journey. Follow your bliss and be good humans.